Understanding how different field types can be visualized is essential for effective data representation. Similarly, considering the vector layer type is crucial for choosing the most suitable visualization method. Here's how these concepts apply in FELT. The simple visualization offers a straightforward approach, universally available for any vector layer type. It applies a single color to all objects, independent of any specific field. Categories, also applicable to any vector layer type, accommodates both numeric and text-based fields, allowing representation of categorical variables. Due to the binary nature of Boolean fields, it's recommended to use the categories visualization instead of color range. Size range is suitable for number fields, adjust point or line stroke sizes based on numeric values, and is applicable to point and line vector layers, but not to polygon layers due to their fixed shapes. And finally, heat maps are available for point vector layers regardless of field type, representing point density across a geographic area and highlighting areas of concentration using a continuous color range. Once we've examined the various visualization types and field types available for each one, we can explore how they converge to create thematic maps. These maps harness the power of selecting the appropriate vector layer and field type to convey spatial information effectively. The Choropleth map, a cornerstone of thematic mapping, illustrates statistical data over predefined regions such as countries or states. Utilizing color or shading, it presents aggregated information, typically with darker hues indicating higher rates of phenomena, such as renter-occupied housing, as shown in the map here. These maps are intuitive and widely used due to their ability to showcase spatial variations effectively. However, they require careful consideration of normalization to avoid misrepresentation and the creation of misleading visuals. Heat maps dynamically visualize point density across landscapes, revealing hidden patterns and hotspots. As seen in this felt map showing a heat map of solar panel and farm installations in the UK, it portrays the density of points, uncovering spatial gradients and concentrations, offering valuable insights. The color scheme adjusts with the zoom level, ensuring optimal visualization regardless of scale. Calculated using the kernel density method, each cell represents relative density. Proportional point symbol maps are commonly used to represent quantitative values associated with various locations on the map, such as earthquake magnitudes, or as this felt map does, visualizing population distribution. In this map, each circle symbolizes the total population of its respective county in the US. Through subtle variations in symbol size and placement, this method is commonly used to communicate disparities in scale and magnitude, enriching our understanding of spatial data. There are two methods used to create proportional point symbol maps, continuous and biranges. These maps utilize the same data set to represent the two types. First, with continuous scaling, the size of each circle on the map is scaled proportionately to its value in the data. This means that larger circles represent higher values, offering a direct visual comparison between individual data points. On the other hand, with ranges, the values are broken into groups, typically between three to five, where symbols are sized based on the group they fall into. This is similar to the choropleth technique used for polygon data. Last but not least, categorical visualizations, like the one used in this map of Williamsburg, offers a clear and intuitive representation of diverse land uses in the area. By assigning unique colors to different categories, it enables quick identification and interpretation of spatial information. This method is ideal for various thematic maps, including those depicting surface geology, soil, vegetation, city zoning, and climate type.